Hello everyone. Today we will talk about fluid mechanics. Yes, fluid dynamics a very important concept because we have been lately talking about this India Sri Lanka series. We have been talking about the World Test Championship uh, final between India and New Zealand, and we have been talking about swing a lot. So today we will understand the concept behind swing. How does the ball swing actually works on a deuce ball, or rather than a cricket ball on a new day? That is when the ball is new, when both the surfaces of the ball are shiny, how the seam plays a role in the swing of the ball and how an old ball plays a part when it comes to swing. Because we have been uh, hearing this uh, thing about Australia as well, uh, because of which uh, David Warner and Steve Smith uh, got uh, banned from Australian cricket because they tried to tamper the ball and what were they actually doing, why were they roughening one surface of the ball using sandpaper whereas keeping the other surface intact tight shiny why were they doing that and what would happen if one surface was rough one surface was shiny what would happen if both the surfaces were shiny and what does the seam of the ball uh, play a part in it so uh, let us first consider the structure of the ball uh, to understand the concept of swing so when you see we try to explain it uh, in terms of fluid mechanics this is the seam of the ball everything that happens with the ball uh, in terms of the swing is controlled by the seam of the ball particularly when it comes to the newer ball even in the rougher ball the position of the seam is very important uh, particularly with the new ball it is very important because wherever in which direction you keep the seam and you drop the ball in that direction uh, seemingly it moves in that direction only supposedly a right handed batsman is batting and you deliver the ball like this uh, where the seam position is to the offside of the right-handed batsman so the ball will be an outswinger that is it will move away from the batsman because the seam of the ball is kept outside the batsman and similarly if you keep the seam of the ball inside the batsman it will cut into the batsman it will be an inswinger now how does this exactly work let us understand the concept of an outswing and an inswing delivery first let us start with an outswing delivery supposedly the bowler I am holding this ball like this and I'm delivering an outswinger delivery where I'm keeping the seam of the ball uh, away from the right-handed batsman, away from the right-handed batsman. Supposedly, you are the batsman, I'm bowling it like this, outside, keeping the seam away from you. So when the seam position is away from the right-hander, the seam, first of all, remember, the seam is rough. So seam provides friction. Seam provides friction. When we talk about a rough seam, it provides friction. You will have to remember this. And what happens when friction is provided? According to fluid mechanics, we know that wherever there is a friction or a constriction or a restriction, there is a wake formation, there is an eddy formation, there is a loss of pressure energy. And that is what exactly drives the ball. That is what exactly drives the concept of swing. So whenever we keep the seam outside, you can see this is the air. This is the air that is coming in contact with the ball. As the ball moves ahead, the air cuts off the surface of the ball and moves back. In the process, what happens is both the sides of the ball are shiny. You see, there are no rough patches on the ball. It's a new ball. It's a sunny day and you ball the first delivery and you see there is a movement of the air across the ball. And since this is a, a new surface of the ball, this is the new surface of the ball, this one, the air cuts through it quite easily and the pressure doesn't drop too much. So, relatively the pressure is high in this region, the air pressure is high in this region. Now you see what happens to this side of the ball as the air cuts across this side, this side of the ball, this side of the ball, that is wherever you are pointing the seam towards, that is outside the batsman, whenever the air is trying to cut through it, air is trying to pass through it, it faces the seam of the ball. It, as it faces the seam of the ball, the rough seam, uh, provides friction, restriction to the ball, uh, to the air. And as the air faces the seam of the ball, faces the restriction, the eddies are formed. See, this is the eddies. These are the eddies. Eddy currents, eddies. We call it eddies. We also call it eddy currents. We also call it wake formation. Wakes. What does this wakes do? Basically, the air was coming at a definite velocity and with a definite pressure. When it faces the restriction, 
uh, the air tends to lose the pressure that it had initially on the ball. So what happens when we face a constriction or a restriction, automatically if some hurdle is there when we are running, we'll automatically our uh, pressure or the force that we are applying uh, will be dropped, our momentum will be dropped and similarly for air as well, whenever it faces the restriction or the constriction or the roughness, roughness, most importantly roughness of the scene, the pressure energy drops because of wake formation or eddy formation across the seam of the ball. So wherever you are pointing the seam, the air in that direction or that side of the ball, as it passes through the seam, as it cuts through the seam, will tend to lose pressure. Whereas on the shiny side of the ball, where the seam is not pointed, on the other side of the ball, uh, the, there will be relatively lesser pressure drop or no pressure drop at all, which creates a pressure difference between the two air layers flowing through two different surfaces of the ball. So this surface is having a higher pressure and this surface is having a lower pressure because of wake and eddy formation. So a natural tendency of the air to force the ball is in this direction. So you see there is a natural force existing because of pressure difference, because of the wake formation, because of the eddy formation, because of the position of the seam of the ball. So wherever you point the seam of the ball on that surface uh, particularly the pressure will drop and due to this pressure loss there will be a difference of pressure there will be a delta p created delta p created across the ball because of which there will be a force existing primarily pushing the ball towards the side of the seam so if you are pointing the seam outside the batsman the air will force the ball to move out of the batsman or it will be an outswinger similarly if we point the seam inside if we point the seam like this if we point the seam inside, you see the air will now pass through the rough surface of the seam and this surface, this side, this side of the ball will have a greater pressure drop compared to this shiny side of the ball. And similarly, again, due to this pressure drop difference, this pressure, high pressure will try to push the ball towards the inswinger or towards the batsman. So you see, if this is my batsman, this is my right-handed batsman holding the bat on this hand and I am the bowler, I'm delivering the ball. I'm keeping the same position like this. So automatically rough patches will be formed on this side, whereas the air will move smoothly on this side and there will be a force existing on this side because pressure is high here, pressure is low here and naturally the ball will move inside. The naturally the ball will move inside and if my same position is like this, the air will have a rough patches here, whereas the air will smooth slowly along this shiny surface and there will be an existing pressure drop. Here pressure is high, here pressure is low, and there will be a force applied on this direction and it will be an outswing. So you see, whenever you tend to hold the seam of the ball, it's very important to maintain the seam of the ball throughout. And that's why the hand action becomes very important that if you maintain the seam throughout in this particular direction, the ball will move in this direction with the new ball where both sides are shiny, my friends. Now comes the concept of when the both sides are roughing off at the end of the game. Then comes the concept that Imran Khan was, was the first to explore that concept for Pakistan that wherever the seam is pointed, the ball tries to move in the reverse direction and that is called the reverse swing which appears at the end of the game. We must have been accustomed with this term. Uh, many bowlers have in the past uh, introduced and reintroduced this term of reverse swing at the late half of the innings when the, both the sides of the ball are rough or particularly one side of the ball is rough. Now we will come to when both the sides of the ball are rough and then we will explore when one side of the ball is rough what will happen. So let us rub this because we have understood the concept of new ball. Let us rub this. So you see when we talk of the old ball where both the surfaces, where both the surfaces are rough, where both sides are rough, it occurs a reverse swing. What is reverse swing? Reverse swing is a technique where the ball tends to move in an opposite direction than the pointation of the seam. Supposedly, I'm keeping the seam outside the batsman. I'm keeping the seam to move out of the batsman such that it is pointed towards outside of the right-handed batsman. It will move inside. The ball will tend to move inside instead of the seam position being outside. And why does this, this happen? Let us understand this. Both the surfaces of the ball are rough now. Both the surfaces of the ball are rough now because it has grown over age and both of the surfaces have become rough. So primarily what happens is wherever you point the seam, wherever you point the seam, 
the seam tries to form eddies or tries to form wake right at this position right at this position and it doesn't let the air doesn't let the air come in contact with the bone with the rough surface of the bone doesn't allow contact with rough surface so you see the seam creates a gap a gap between the air layer and the rough surface layer because of this wake formation because of the deviation because of the restriction that the air initially faced when it touched the seam of the ball so initially it lost some amount of pressure and the air layer has moved outside it has created a gap from the rough surface of the ball and that's why it doesn't further face any kind of pressure drop try to understand this whereas this fresh entry of air doesn't face any restriction of the ball on this side of the ball it doesn't face any restriction and straight away faces the pressure drop due to the rough surface the roughening throughout it faces the pressure drop throughout this faces the pressure drop throughout the pressure of the pressure drop whereas for this side of the ball only faces the pressure drop on the seam of the ball whereas it doesn't come in that much in contact with the rough surface of the ball whereas this side of the air if you see is clearly and straight away exposed to the rough surface this side is exposed to rough surface so you see doesn't allow the contact with the rough surface exposed to the rough surface directly and you see since the rough surface surface area is more roughness is more the pressure will relatively be lesser here instead of the seam position being on this side the pressure will be lesser here because of the roughness of the ball initially when the ball was shiny this was not the case the seam was the only one producing restriction only one producing weight losses only one producing friction but when it comes to the roughness of the ball both the surfaces grow rough and now the roughness is introducing more frictional loss more frictional loss my friends than the seam itself and that's why there will be a tendency of the ball to move in the reverse direction instead of the seam being pointed in the opposite direction so if the batsman is batting like this if it's holding the bat like this and you tend to bring a rough ball and tend to keep the swing seam position in this direction where both the surfaces are rough the air will primarily have some pressure losses and will move out whereas this air will always face the rough surface will have a pressure drop throughout and will move out and hence the pressure will be much lower in this region than in this region instead of the seam being pointed in this direction the ball will move in this direction this is called the concept of reverse swing when both the sides of the surface both the sides are rough but this reverse swing doesn't effectively play a role that much when both the surfaces are equally rough because more or less the both the uh, air layers face almost equal amount of friction and that's why the ball doesn't rotate or does it doesn't turn or doesn't swing that much in the late of an innings if both the surfaces are equally rough the seam plays a minute role and it occurs a little bit of reverse swing at the end of the innings what if one of the surfaces is shiny and one of the surfaces is rough that is very interesting my friend that is very interesting let us discuss this let us discuss this when one of the surfaces is rough supposedly this is the ball and you keep the seam straight and one surface is rough very rough and one surface is shiny this is a very typically uh, a typical condition which most of the bowlers deem to create seem to create and they are eager to create this condition and that's why they keep on roughening roughening one surface and keep on shining the other surface you must have seen in a cricket match that they apply the saliva on the ball to clean the surface of the ball to clean one surface of the ball continuously they keep on rubbing it rubbing it on their shirt on their pants and they uh, keep on cleaning one surface of the ball this is the surface of the ball that they clean 
and one the other surface tend to get rough over time so this is the perfect condition for a reverse swing bowler and this is the condition which every bowler would be here you do not need to keep the position of the seam tilted you just need to keep the position of the seam straight when you keep the position of the seam straight the seam has no role to play now in this kind of a reverse swing when with the old ball one side is rough another side the other side is shiny so it has shine so this side is shiny it is kept clean and this side is rough now what happens is since the seam position is straight the seam has no role to play the air that comes here straight away gets friction so the air layer that is exposed to this side of the ball straight away faces friction and the air layer that faces this side of the ball moves smooth without any restriction and what happens straight away there is a immense amount of pressure drop immense amount of pressure drop here but no amount of pressure drop there because of weight formation the pressure has dropped here and there is a large amount of force acting from this side to the this side of the ball and when that happens when that happens my friend the uh, shiny side of the ball the shiny side of the ball uh, it, the, the, the ball will tend to move away from it generally what happens the ball tends to move where the shiny side is but in case of reverse swing my friend in case of reverse swing wherever the rough patches are the ball tends to move towards that side so in reverse swing you see so the pressure is high here the pressure is relatively low here and the force is exerted uh, on the old ball towards the rough patches and the ball turns out to be an in swinger instead of the same position being straight so when one side is rough and one side is shiny the ball tends to move the ball tends to move wherever the rough patches are and this is the concept of reverse swing and that's why they generally try to keep one surface clean and another surface rough so that was the use of the sandpaper that was the use of biting the ball if you see uh, uh, many a times you must have seen this, uh, pakistani players uh, uh, biting the ball time and again and trying to create marks and rough patches on one side of the ball and trying to clean the other side of the ball so that they can produce this reverse swing that is there but uh, if they were once it, 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 it has been uh, declared illegal that you cannot tamper the ball and uh, the australian players were seen tampering the ball with the sandpaper such that they could create one side rough and another side smooth such that there is a reverse swing that is produced due to the weight formation and the fluid dynamics of the air when it comes to the con comes in contact with the ball and this is the exact mechanism and this is complete fluid dynamics now you know how does a swing work on a surface how does a swing work by movement of the seam how does a swing work against air so i think that will be it we have discussed all the three cases of swing and if you liked our video like it share it with your friends subscribe to our channel hit the bell icon for regular updates that's all for today thank you very much